In this lesson we're going to look at this concept of equivalent fractions again. Um, and we've seen this before, um, of course, in the context of writing a fraction in lowest terms. So recall what was going on there if I took a fraction like, you know, 4, 6, and I wanted to write it in lowest terms, what I'm trying to do is make it so the top and bottom number of the fraction are as small as possible. And so uh, what we discovered about uh, fractions is that we are allowed to divide the top and bottom uh, by the same number and the fraction doesn't change. It just changes the way it looks. So here the greatest common factor is 2. So if we divided top and bottom by 2, what we got was a 2 on top and a 3 on bottom. And so 2 thirds was the same as 4 6 written in lowest terms. So that's the context we've understood equivalent fractions before is 4 6 and 2 thirds are equivalent fractions. But remember we also discovered that in addition to being able to divide the top and bottom by the same thing we were also allowed to multiply the top and bottom of a fraction by the same thing and that new fraction would still be equivalent. And so we put a little reminder up here about that fact um, and we're going to put that into practice in these problems down here where uh, what we're trying to do is rewrite in the first case, 5 eighths, as a fraction that has a 16 on the bottom. Now just to give you an idea of where we'll end up using this is when we get to adding and subtracting fractions, this is going to be an important skill to have. So when I try to turn 8 into 16, I just am really asking myself, what do I multiply 8 by in order to make 16? Well, it's pretty easy to answer. We're going to multiply 8 by 2 because 8 times 2 is 16. And so we understand the rule is if I want to keep an equivalent fraction, I need to multiply the top by the exact same number. So what that tells me is if I want to turn 5 eighths into a fraction that has a 16 on the bottom, the top is going to need to be 10. So our answer here is 10 sixteenths. Let's take a look at this example. We have to ask ourselves the same question. What do I multiply 16 by to make 80? Remember, if the answer is not immediately clear to you, you can simply divide, right? How many times does 16 go into 80? The answer turns out to be 5 times. I need to do a little bit of thinking about that to come up with that answer, but the answer is 5, and so we have 16 times 5 makes 80, so that means I better multiply the top by 5 also. So that means that this is a 15, and so our answer is 15 eightieths. All right, finally, um, we've got this situation over here. And this one looks a little funny. We've got this whole number, right? A whole number equal to a fraction with a 6 on the bottom. And so my suggestion here, and this is a trick that's going to help you a lot throughout this chapter, not just in these types of problems, is to understand that the number 5 is the same as 5 divided by 1. Okay, that's pretty obvious, but uh, remember also that division is basically the same thing as having a fraction, right? So 5 over 1 as a fraction is the same as 5 divided by 1. And so what we end up here with is 5 over 1 equals question mark over 6. And then we can approach this in the same way we did the previous problem. So we've got, uh, to answer the question, 1 times what equals 6? And of course, that's a pretty easy question to answer. 1 times 6 equals 6. So that must mean I need to multiply 5 by 6 as well. So that means this question mark is really the number 30. And so our answer for what an equivalent fraction is with a 6 on the bottom uh, to 5 well, that's 30 over 6.